Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today we're gonna to talk about the Denifrips Ares 2 DAC. This is an R2R DAC. Um, I'm gonna get into some of the technical stuff about this. There's a lot, and it really goes down a rabbit hole <laughs> of discussion from R2R versus Delta Sigma. If you have no idea what that is, that's okay. I'll cover some of the basics. Um, but anyway, so this DAC has changed in price a little bit. Now, part of that has been because of demand, um, because as the reviews keep coming out and how incredible this product is, more people want to buy it. And then as a result with uh, supply chain, and um, I don't know if remnants of COVID or not, but basically the price has gone up a bit since it came out. I've used this extensively. I have uh, several other DACs I've compared it to, use it on different speakers and headphones. So I'll get into all that. Now, it is a big and heavy DAC. It actually weighs 7.7 .7 pounds. Um, it has a lot of heft to it. And this metal enclosure is really nice. I mean, it measures eight and a half inches wide and, and the dimensions online say it's nine inches deep, but realistically, once you factor in those uh, RCA cables or ports, um, the length gets closer to 10 inches. And realistically, the height is about two and a half, just under two and a half because of these feet. The dimensions you see online don't include the feet. So I just wanna point that out. It has some good size to it. It doesn't get too hot, it gets warm, but if you're concerned about stacking um, between the feet on the bottom and the temperature that it hits on top, I'm not too concerned about where this is placed in your stack. Obviously, if you have something that runs extremely hot, I don't recommend putting anything on top of that, so don't do that here. Okay, now as far as inputs go, you have uh, XLR and RCA outputs. The XLR pair uh, to run full balance uh, outputs at four volts, and then you have the RCA outputs running at two volts. As far as inputs goes, you get five. You get two sets of coax, two optical, and one USB. I primarily use this in USB mode. Um, I run this a lot as my primary DAC on my computer, um, and that's hooked up to my headphone amplifiers. It's very easy to a daisy chain between RCA and XLR. So uh, I've been able to test a lot of different amps and this has always been my uh, go-to DAC because it kind of gets the most out of my sound. So I'm not, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, um, but I do want to also point out that the back also, um, the power input on it, it uses a linear power supply. Some of the price you're paying for is the power supply on this. It's absolutely ridiculous um, and it's integrated, which I love. I hate having those bricks for power supply everywhere. You know, you're switching power supplies that you typically see. Um, this is nice that it's all integrated and also nice that it's linear. Now we're gonna pop the cover off of this in a second, but I do wanna discuss something and that is R2R or resistor ladder uh, versus Delta Sigma. Um, so you'll see different terms online. You'll see R2R, you'll see DS, you'll see Burr Brown, um, ESS Saber, you have AKM. The ESS, AKM, Burr Brown typically are your Delta Sigma DACs. All of those are, the reason why Delta Sigma came out, which is a newer technology than R2R or the resistor ladder stack, um, it's just cheaper, it's more economical, and it doesn't mean it performs poorly, but because manufacturers were able to reduce costs and it helps, it helps for packaging, so the costs are kind of compounded uh, because you can kind of typically make a uh, smaller unit when you go with a, a Delta Sigma style DAC. So there's pros and cons to both. I don't wanna say that R2R is better in every way because it's not, and Delta Sigma isn't better in every way because it's not. Also, what I think is better for me may not be better for you. Um, and it's not even just your own listening preference, it's also your system and what music you listen to or what content you consume. Very, audio has so many variables just like music does, you know, I, I can't tell you what genre to like, you just like different things. So I'm basing this review off of my experience, how I feel, what I enjoy, and what I'm using for equipment to go with this DAC to complement it. Now, there's no denying Delta Sigma DACs typically measure better. They're very, very clean. You have lower distortion levels, lower noise levels, um, better sensitivity, etc. There's There's different measurements that will pretty much always show Delta Sigma as being a more effective um, technology for producing sound, again, purely from a measurement standpoint. Now, I don't have all the equipment to fully measure this R2R DAC, and R2R DACs are not created equal. There are some that are significantly better than others. Uh, Vinshine Audio, being the manufacturer of this one, uh, it, it probably has some of the best DACs on the market as far as I'm concerned. This is their cheapest one. They have DACs that go to for 
six thousand dollars i think there's one over eight now um so they make high quality stuff now i like the r2r sound i am a i really like vinyl i listen to um different records and on the record side i'm using uh, music hall mmf 3.3 using an order phone cartridge vincent audio phono preamps and then typically i would go to my um ps audio stellar strata amplifier um, or my SV500 integrated hybrid amp, which has the tube pre-stage. There's a lot of different ways you can impact your sound at the end of the day. And I like what the R2R DAC brought to me because it kind of preserved some of what I loved about record or listening to records, but on a USB DAC for my computer, which is incredibly convenient for day-to-day -day use. So uh, with that being said, I want to take the top off of this. I'll show you what the insides look like. All right, so I'm gonna slide this out. Now we'll do some nice close-ups too, but I wanna show you a uh, interactive tour of this product. So I'm gonna try to hold this up as steady as I can and see how this comes out and then I'll point it out. So you have, of course, your power input here. This is your power filtering stage. So this is what's gonna help get rid of the noise coming in. A ridiculous transformer, which I think a lot, pretty much a good chunk of the weight based off what I feel is coming from this transformer. Then you move over, and this is mirrored. So uh, you have your power supply, all those capacitors. That's what's providing power to the board. Now, on the top side, you have the USB input right here. The, this is custom, by the way. There is a custom driver online for this. I'll put a link in the description because if you have Windows, that's really the best way you can get the most out of this DAC is to use the custom driver they provide. Now, they have an FPGA uh, right here that is outputting to your dual as you can tell this is a fully balanced resistor stack and that is where the magic is happening so you get a fully balanced output stage it actually uses femto clocks um, for both 44 and 48 kilohertz sample rates um, there's a lot of magic in this design and it's a beautiful beautiful chassis i mean this is kind of somewhat of an old school way of doing things r2r when done properly uh, is not cheap and you can see that here now, selecting resistors, they really have to be balanced uh, to have the proper performance. So some of the cost comes in from using resistors that have such a tight tolerance, the manufacturer expects it to perform a certain way, and that comes down to uh, this section here. That's really where the magic is happening in addition to providing it with a pretty incredible power source. Now, I noticed, too, um, going into the front of the chassis, so these buttons here, they're fairly, uh, fairly small, but they have a nice tactile feel. And when this is lit up, the LEDs aren't that bright either, which is very, very welcome. Um, I, I don't like things that get overly flashy on the audio equipment. Um, I don't want it to be a distraction. You want to look at it from up front to know what you're adjusting, but overall, um, it's a very understated, simple, um, borderline industrial looking device. It's, it's all metal. There's no plastic anywhere. Everything is metal, of course. You have your XLR inputs and stuff that's plastic, but the chassis itself is incredibly solid. Um, and I just think it's built really well. So that's the inside. Now I want to talk to you about sound quality. Okay, so the sound quality is easily my favorite thing to discuss with products because at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Um, how do you enjoy the sound? And the Denifrips does some magic. And I'm not just saying it from a technological perspective um, because Again, you can make the argument of what technologies are better. Um, but at the end of the day, when you're listening to music, you it's, it's kind of shocking how much a DAC can improve a high-end sound system. You know, I in the past, historically, I didn't feel like a super expensive DAC was going to be this end-all, be-all solution um, to drastically improve my other stuff. You know, I thought... You know, especially with the way DACs have come along, um, considering five, 10 years ago, how much DACs have improved, 100 to $200 DACs, um, companies like JDS, um, SEL, you know, SHIT, um, S-C-H-I-I-T, by the way, um, they make great DACs that are affordable. Now, this is literally three to five times the cost of some of those DACs, so you you do expect something more, but you have to keep in mind there are DACs out there that are five to $10,000. So um, when I heard this and what it did to my music, I was absolutely floored. Um, it works so well with so much of my equipment, particularly because you have different modes. You can do oversampling versus non-oversampling or NOS. Um, and it's very easy to change. Uh, basically, 
you know what, let's talk about that. So while you press the, press the mute button, and as soon as you press that, hit optical one, and now it's in configuration mode, and pressing optical one um, again will enable or disable oversampling. And you'll see the light turn on and off. And then to change the filter, repeat the same process. Press mute, press optical two, and then if you have your slow, fast filter, basically. And what I found was to enable oversampling and set it to the slow filter. That was my favorite. Um, it was pretty versatile as far as uh, all the music I was listening to. I like equipment to have some musicality and fun and excitement to it, but sometimes, um, depending again on your system, if it wakes it up too much, it can come across as too harsh or fatiguing to listen to. It's almost like too energetic, like someone that drank way too much coffee and you're just not in the mood for that. You tell them to chill. Um, th some DACs or amps can do that or music systems, uh, depending on your speaker and room configuration, can just be over the top. I found that to give me the best balance of soundstage and layering to my music and detail without being fatiguing in any way. Um, I, I could just listen to music on this all day and I have whether it be through headphones or speakers. Now I mentioned some of my equipment before so I'm using this DAC. Um, my primary headphone amp that I use is actually the Monoprice uh, THX uh, 887. Uh, it's a great amp for $300. It's super super clean. It's very quiet. It doesn't really do anything to the sound so uh, it's kind of like a pure sounding amp. Um, kind of sterile in a sense but I like it because it helps me benchmark a lot of different uh, headphones and, and things like that. Um, I also recently got some Burson um, amplifiers, headphone amps. I have the Fun and the Funk. Um, both of those are great and those are even more expensive than my uh, Monoprice amp and those allow you to do op amp uh, rolling so if you want to change the output stage you can mess with that. So uh, and then of course uh, I have the shit amp deck from the Hell 2 not really a great alternative to use with this. It kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, and then the JDS Labs Atom Stack. So I mess around with that. Now on the output side for speakers, I traditionally use my PS Audio Strata um, just because of the power of it. It's, it's super clean. Um, it has its own filtering, but again, if you bypass it and you run with this instead, uh, you get kind of the best of both worlds in my opinion. And I've tried it on several speakers. I've used my Martin Logan Motion XTs. I've used the uh, Bowers and Wilkin, uh, Wilkin 606 S2s. Uh, great bookshelf speaker, by the way. And, you know, this, what this allows me to do, and I just went off a whole tangent on, on equipment, but I've tried a lot of different audio sources, a lot of different listening sources, if you will. And the Denifrips has always been my favorite for the DAC processing side of things. What am I doing to take my signal from my computer, typically, and sending it to my equipment? And it just, it blows me away because you get a little bit more vividness, a little bit more texture in the mids, and a little bit more airiness to the sound without making it fatiguing or ruining what the artist is kind of trying to convey to you. And um, I so I get, here's a good one. <laughs> so when you have audio equipment at your home, there's a disconnect. The artist is not in front of you. It's going through all this stuff. And usually you can tell there's that layer in between. The equipment is the layer between the artist and you. And what the Denifrips does is it helps reduce or effectively remove that filter from artist to you. It brings the music more in the room. Uh, it's more noticeable on speakers. Um, if you have a nice separation of speakers and your room is set up nice, it just kind of, uh, especially with acoustic music, my God, um, it it just having that presence and the emotion of the music come through more because now you're basically removing that middleman of the equation um, makes such an incredible impact on your experience. And again, you can enable and disable oversampling. You can change the filter to fast versus slow and kind of dial it in. I What I like may not be what you like, and it also depends, you know, if I change my equipment to something different, I might not even like that configuration. So play around with your oversampling and your filter modes um, to see what you like more for your setup and what you listen to, and I think you'll, you'll be really happy. Um, you know, I don't know how long, I'm trying not to make this review too long. I'm more passionate about the way it sounds than the way things measure. 
because at the end of the day, I'm not looking at spec sheets. Um, I like it for research. I like talking about spec sheets. But what makes me enjoy equipment the most is how I get to use it every day, how it sounds. Um, does that become a distraction or does it let me, I guess, embrace and just consume music and entertainment and stuff more? And that's kind of what the Dentifrips Aries 2 does the best of everything I've demoed. Now, I've gone to Can Jam. I've listened to a lot of different DACs, admittedly not to the extent of the ones I have here at my home. Um, but this, this is just such a special DAC at this price point. And yes, it's a lot more than what it was when it first came out. I think equipment in general has gone up. But when you're looking at five, six, seven hundred dollar DACs, uh, I'd still strongly consider springing for a more expensive DAC like the Aries 2. And this is their least expensive R2R DAC they sell. Um, so they're using some of that knowledge and understanding of this technology and, and fine tuning over time and bringing it down to a more affordable price range so more people can enjoy what this technology from theirs can produce. Um, so the, the Aries 2 is, is seriously a magical piece. And if you've already invested so much money in amps and, and speakers or headphones, you know, I'm using the hi Feynman Arias Stealth and the SE, uh, or the HE1000 SEs, um, $5,000 worth of headphones. And, you know, you don't just buy a $200 DAC and think you're going to get the most out of it. Um, when you use a DAC like this on headphones like that, it's almost as if there's multiple planars <laughs> around your head. It's n Somehow, it doesn't just come from left and right. It, it kind of really starts screwing with your head as far as a, a holographic presentation goes. Um, and a lot of that magic comes from the Aries too. As soon as you switch to another DAC, it becomes apparent in that regard because some of that little extra separation and airiness starts shrinking. And it sounds more in your head than around your head. So from a headphone perspective and from a speaker perspective, again, all of that's just bringing you into the music more. I think that the way it emphasizes music, it doesn't have a, a really unique coloring of the sound. It's not like the bass is increased and the highs are increased or recessed or anything like that. Somehow it feels like it's just emphasizing everything just right with every little nuance just being stretched just a little bit wider. Um, the, the attack and decay is still really fast. So if you're concerned with, uh, you know, how well it's handling bass and the tightness of bass, it's still there. It's not adding an overly rich, deep rumble to the sound. The bass is there. It sounds incredible, but it's still very smooth and very tight. And then again, on the highs, I didn't find it overly bright or harsh. In fact, it's probably the least harsh of all my DACs I've used. It's, it's extremely smooth, yet still somehow gets so much detail out of the music and um yeah i i absolutely love the sound all right so that about wraps up the review um I, I don't know how long of a tangent i just went on for the sound quality and the experience but to me that's what makes uh stuff like this most memorable it doesn't if this isn't the one solution for everything dac um it does not support mqa so if some people really need to have mqa um it doesn't do that it just it you can still listen to mqa tracks on this and it'll still sound incredible so please don't consider that as the only like make or break uh, for your audio source. Um, I use Tidal all the time and I would much rather prefer this over an MQA certified DAC that doesn't sound as good to me. So again, it, look at the form factor, look at the inputs and outputs, make sure that does what you want. I found that this is understated in a sense that it's just focusing on what it's supposed to do and trying to execute as best as possible at its price range. Um, so I can't recommend it enough. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more uh, high-end audio coverage coming up. Um, we have some great products. I wanted to talk about the DAC first because it's been one of my most exciting things I've used lately. And it really transforms your music experience way beyond what I thought a DAC would do in, in all the right ways. Again, it's not coloring the sound. I'm just It makes all of my headphones and speakers more enjoyable to listen to. And the music is just it's so present. Um, and I think the emotion part of the music comes through better. And that's incredibly important when you're spending this kind of money. So uh, anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below for the Vinshine uh, website. If there's any other sites I can help you as far as resources go, check there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We appreciate any support. And check out our social media as well. I'll have links down there. Thank you as always for the support. And I'll see you next time. Bye.